Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right video. Today we're going to be talking cucumbers, how I'm planting them, talking about my trellis system, the different fertilizers and amendments that I'm going to add to make sure my cucumbers are as healthy as possible so they can put out the most nutrient-dense cucumbers as possible and have the best health so that they can resist pest and disease. So here we go, let's go check it out. So here's a few of my best cucumbers, and I really advise checking out my super in-depth video about pruning the cucumbers, finding the suckers, and how to remove them. As of right now, there's not too many suckers, but if you're familiar with the idea of suckers, they grow in the crotch of a plant, and what they do is they'll sap away the energy from the main stem to try to produce their own fruit. And we don't want to do that because in my trellising system, we're training to a single leader doing lower and lean. Uh, and I'll put a link to the video of my lower and lean system and how to train uh, cucumbers to that system. So today's all about how to do uh, really good planting with your cucumbers. So I'm going to clean these up a little bit. I'm going to just take off the first couple leaves here. And the reason for that is they don't look as healthy. And when I plant this, I want to plant this a this stem into the ground a little bit not as deep as say a tomato if you've seen my tomato planting video but i do want to bury some of this so that there will be extra root growth coming out of the sides here and giving an overall better root structure giving it more access to nutrients and water and typically uh when i get, i plant my cucumbers a lot of times i'll notice that if i don't plant them deep enough they can get a bit weak around the root area and I want to have a really secure hold to the ground because as I'm training them and moving them, um, it's possible to tear them out of the ground. Um, and I just want to be extra cautious. So it's another reason to plant it a little bit deeper and just allow these really tall, super healthy leaves to soak in that sunlight, photosynthesize, and grow the plant. So the very first thing I need to do is mark out where I'm gonna plant my cucumbers. So for that, I have a 100 foot measuring tape here. I'll put a link in the description to all the different amendments, tools, and things that I'm using to do this. First, we're gonna mark out the row with that tape and a hoe really simply but quickly. So I'll just use a brick to hold it in place. And the front mark here, that is gonna go where the first cucumber will be planted. So I'm doing it at the very edge of the bed. And now I'm gonna take this to the other side. All right, and then my last cucumber is gonna be at 40 feet. And I'm just gonna mark that with my brick. So I'll pull the tape tight, make sure I'm nice and good. And then that brick is gonna hold the tape in place. So just in case I do hit it with the hoe as I'm going, I won't lose my measurements because I really want these to be super equidistant because I plant my tomatoes and cucumbers uh, one foot distance apart. So from here to here, this distance is one foot. But I put them offset, maximizing the horizontal distance from the tomatoes, allowing more air and light to get in there. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the cucumbers. So spacing is really important because we're putting them at this close of spacing. And when you do this, you need to, your management of the cucumbers needs to be really good. So I'm training these at least once a week, pruning suckers and trellising up a single stem. I'll just make a mark with my hoe where I'm gonna be planting them so I can come back and dig my holes. So now I'll be using this three inch wide trenching shovel in order to dig my holes skinny, uh, but a little bit deep. So I'm gonna go down about six to, it's about six to eight inches. And I want the spacing to be as wide as possible so that at this close 12 inch spacing, I'm giving them as much room as I can, as much air and as much light so that they can get the maximum growth and also to help prevent disease. Okay, got all the holes dug. 
So now let's go take a look at the amendments that I'm gonna use for this and how I'm gonna apply them as well. All right, so for the fertilizer and amendments that I'm gonna be adding, of course, the base of it is gonna be really good compost. And this is composted horse manure. So I would either use my homemade compost. It's gonna need like another week or two before I'll be completely ready, but this stuff is so good. And this is from a customer of mine who doesn't add medications or anything like that. And this has been aged for close to a year now, I think. So you'll need some compost that you've made or that you'll buy. And then here's a few of the amendments that you can buy. So I love this Dr. Earth kelp meal. Um, it's got tons of different trace minerals, 60 or 70 different types. And also the Dr. Earth, he puts in mycorrhizae fungi in here. So it's got that as well in the mix, which I love. And it's kind of a long-term mineral source because it's little flakes of the kelp. Then here I've got my azomite rock dust. This is 70 trace minerals from a mine in Utah. I love azomite. Um, it's got all the minerals that plants need and more because the extra minerals that the plants don't use, the soil biology is going to use those for their processes as well. And having these minerals in here is going to really prevent blossom end rot or any other mineral deficient problems. If your plant has all the available nutrients from the beginning of its life to the end of its life, that's going to really combat any pest or disease problems, any fruit production problems and things like that. So that's why minerals are very, very important. And I'll put links in the description for all the different products that I use. Um, this is Roots Organic uh, Uprising Bloom Fertilizer. It is a 364 fertilizer, so it's higher in phosphate. Now fishbone meal, bat guano, feather meal, glacial rock dust, green sand, uh, alfalfa meal, lots of good stuff. So this is gonna provide any other major nutrients uh, and minerals too that I'm not providing. And so I like to add a little bit of that in there. And I'll show you the amounts that I'm putting in as well. And then the final ingredient is biochar. This is biochar that I made at home and I made all the charcoal in a little homemade fire. I can show you how I did it in a previous video, but I still need to make a really in-depth video about biochar. But basically it's a soil inoculant and it's charcoal. And the reason it's called biochar is because you've inoculated it with beneficial microbes, fungi, and even nutrients. This is an, a fantastic home for all three of those things. So it's a way of restoring uh, the health of soil, adding more nutrients. You don't have to fertilize as much by having this in your soil. So check it out if you haven't heard about biochar. It's pretty interesting stuff. Okay, so now for the amounts that I put in. Um, I don't, you know, I don't really measure things. I have an approximate amount that I put in. Um, the fertilizer, I, I do judge based upon what they recommend. So for the biochar, I'm just gonna sprinkle out a couple handfuls. And this I inoculated with um, compost and a ton of compost and worm tea as well. Like three handfuls. The biochar should be pretty much like a maximum of 5%. Some people have gone as high as like 10% in a mix, but it's not necessary. My soil is pretty good already. So I'm gonna do like 1% or not even. Then we've got our kelp meal with mycorrhizae. This is something I add to my seedling mixes as well. So for this, I'm adding about a full cup into this wheelbarrow. The azomite also about a full cup. And then same for my fertilizer, based upon their recommendations. They say like five to 10 pounds per 100 square foot garden bed, but we're not covering the whole garden bed. We're just doing a handful in the bottom of the hole and then some on top of the plant as well. This is like two cups actually. And then I like to mix it with a pitchfork. Well, I like to start mixing it with a pitchfork and then I'll do the final mixing with a, a flat edge shovel so that I can be sure to scoop and scrape the bottom of this wheelbarrow really well. I always like mixing my compost on top of my compost pile or right next to it so that if some does spill out, it's just going back into the pile and I'm not gonna lose any of those nutrients. They'll eventually get out into my beds. I'm just trying to break this soil up a little. I like doing this technique with the pitchfork where I go as deep as I can and then shake it upwards. And that helps all the nutrients or the amendments filtrate down into this compost. Then once I've gotten it decently mixed, I'll come in with my straight edge shovel so that I can scrape the bottom 
And it's important to mix it really well so that each tomato is getting the same amount of nutrients. If I see any big chunks of wood chips or carbon pieces, I want to get those out of there. Okay, super happy with this now. So now we're gonna go put it into some five gallon buckets so we can easily distribute it out into the holes. I'm just gonna throw one handful into each hole. I want the plant's roots to have access to the really good nutrients right away. I'm also gonna top dress this fertilizer compost amendment on the top as well. That way that the topsoil, when it waters, it'll infiltrate the nutrients down. And then there's a bunch of good stuff already in the bottom. And I've just found that over time, um, you know, it's a really good way to start your summer fruiting crops. And that's how a lot of the professional market gardeners do it as well. So I'm gonna spread this out. Then I'll come in and set up my cucumbers for planting. Okay, so to plant this cucumber, I've cleaned it up already. I've test fit the hole and it can be planted a little bit deeper. So I could have dug my hole a little better. I also added in a bunch of that really good fertilizer. Great little root structure on my cucumber here. Starting to get a little root bound though. So I could have planted these earlier. So what I'm gonna do is just pull the fertilizer back so I can get it as deep as I can. And then I'm gonna hold the stem to make sure it doesn't break as I bring in all the soil. Then I'm gonna compress it down so that I'm removing all the air pockets to keep the roots really healthy. If a root hits an air pocket, it will die. All right, that's it. Now I'm gonna add two big handfuls of my compost fertilizer or minerals. There we go and just spread that around and that's it. That's all I'm gonna do. Super simple. Then the next step for me is to trellis it. Now for you, you may wanna use trellis netting or you could uh, just run them up a single stake. There's a lot of different ways that you could do cucumbers in your garden, your homestead or your farm. This is the way I've chosen to do it because we have a really long growing season and I don't need to grow in a greenhouse. So it's pretty cool. We can grow up until about December with these uh, tomatoes and cucumbers. So for me, I'm able to pull this off outside. Some people will do the same method in a greenhouse. For you, you'll need to think about your area and what's gonna be best for you, what you have access to. If you're only doing, you know, five or six cucumbers, then um, I would do either trellis netting or just you, you can make your own trellis out of a few stakes and you can use your own either Cecil rope or you could use old, uh, if you get bales of straw or hay, the baling string as part of your trellis system. So there's a lot of different ways you could do it to save money and make it easier on yourself. Let's plant one more together just so you can get a really good idea. And then I'm gonna finish planting all these. So this one's a bit longer. I'm gonna take one more leaf off. I'm squeezing the pot to make it looser to make it easy to come out. I'm gonna rub the outside of the plant so that the roots can just really dive out and get to work and they're not stuck in there. Okay, perfect. So bring in the soil here, compress, and add my fertilizer. Perfect, done. All right, so check out the cucumbers about 11 days after planting. They're looking really good. They've really taken off and they've grown quite a bit and I've harvested a few cucumbers already. So that's really excellent and they're tasting extremely good. And I just wanted to point out a couple of the things. You might have noticed that I have interplanted these cucumbers. I interplant with my, all of my vining crops like tomatoes. So here I did green onions and then some herbs, dill and parsley here. So interplanting is a fantastic way to grow more food on the same amount of space so that you can make either more money or produce more food for yourself. And I'll be making a video coming out soon uh, about interplanting techniques and kind of how you can, the timing of it works and a little more details about it as well.